Since we are looking at different kinds of propositions, let us think for a minute. Is it possible to know truth? What is the general criterion of truth? What makes something true? Why is it we agree to and affirm those propositions which contain the most certain and unquestionable truth? It is because the ideas of the subject and predicate appear with so much clearness and strength of evidence that they do agree with each other that the mind cannot help discerning the agreement and cannot doubt the truth of them and is constrained to judge that they are true. So what is the criterion of truth? Evidence. We should beware of teaching that says that truth is unknowable, whether it's a moral or religious truth. We can know that they are false because that they determine that every proposition is unknowable and they believe that as a fact, while at the same time they're saying that nothing is certain. One of the reasons we make so many mistakes is because we are in a hurry to form a judgment of things before we have gathered enough evidence for a clear and evident perception of their agreement or disagreement. If we make judgments while our ideas are not clear about whether those things agree or disagree, we will make many mistakes in life. Throughout life, we will often come across certain and dubious propositions of knowledge and opinion. Evidence is the criterion and the sure mark of truth. Since we consider propositions according to their evidence, we are now going to notice different degrees of evidence and the different kinds of it. When the evidence of the agreement of ideas is so strong and plain that we cannot forbid or delay our affirming that they agree, the proposition is called certain. The assent or the affirmation to such propositions is called knowledge. It is what we know for sure to be true. When there is any obscurity upon the agreement or disagreement of the ideas, so that the mind does not clearly perceive it and we are not compelled to affirm or deny it, then the proposition is called doubtful or uncertain. For example, the proposition, the world will not stand a thousand years longer. That proposition is a doubtful or uncertain proposition because we cannot say yea or nay. We should always suspend a full judgment or determination about anything and make further inquiries when plain and perfect evidence is lacking. Uncertain or dubious propositions are also known as opinions, and they could be distinguished into probable or improbable. When there is an equally strong argument on either side, and the evidence for or against any proposition appears pretty much equal to the mind, it is commonly called a doubtful matter or doubtful proposition. A doubtful proposition would also be when there is no argument on either side. For example, next New Year's Day will have a very sharp frost. Well, there is no argument on either side that it will happen or that it won't happen. There is no evidence. Many times the necessities of action in the affairs of life constrains us to judge and determine upon a tolerable degree of evidence where we would have but little room or reason to doubt of them although the evidence may not be complete certainty is either objective or subjective objective certainty is when the proposition is certainly true in itself and subjective when we are certain of the truth of it the one is in things the other is in our minds. It is best in doubtful situations to remain in a state of doubt or suspense until superior evidence is offered which helps us determine the probability or certainty to one side. You will find that there are many propositions in life that have various degrees of evidence which don't arise to complete certainty of either true or falsehood. There are indefinite degrees of probability and improbability. 